Explore the bizarre. bizarre. Your e-ticket ride into the world of the paranormal. Strap yourself in as we traverse the universe exploring the unexplained. UFOs, 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 ghosts, ghosts lost, worlds, lost worlds, cryptozoology, cryptozoology as well as other dimensions. dimensions. It's time to take back the night. Back the night. Back. Now, your electrifying hosts of Exploring the Bazaar, Timothy Beckley and Tim Swartz. Where is it? Where is it? Where, where is my precious? Tim! Tim Beckley! Oh, I finally found you! What, what are you doing down in this dark and nasty cave? Lost. Lost. Lost, lost, lost my precious. It's lost. Pre- precious? What precious? Must have precious. They stole it from us. It's ours. We want it. We need it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Calm down here. I'll, I'll help you look for it. Oh, wait. Wait. Here's something. Precious. Precious? Oh. But this is just a corned beef on rye sandwich. Precious. Give me. Give me. No, 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 no. We have a show to do, and you can have... Hmm. You can have it once we... Mm. Uh, get back to KCOR. Mm. Mm. Stop it. Stop it. Mm. Stop it. Stop eating the precious. Mm. Stop eating it now. No, my, the... my precious. Go back to the studio. I'm, I'm here in the caves. Yes. Mm. Okay. That's good. That's good precious, Tim. Boy. Okay. I'd rather have the ring. <laughs> Mm. Need some horseradish. I swear. So, how are you doing out there in um, uh, cool and funky Jasper, Indiana? Cool and funky. Well, it hasn't been cool and funky yet. Tomorrow, it's supposed to start getting cool and funky. But, uh, you know, what do you expect for this time of year? It's almost Halloween. It's October. Uh, uh, it's my, uh. my, my Christmas, you know. Well, you know, um, just to uh, put in a pl- little plug here for something, I, I seldom uh, attend uh, affairs, but uh, this uh, Sunday, which is October 13th, I actually will be attending a fair, sort of. Mm-hmm. It's the Jersey City Oddities uh, Market, mm-hmm. and it's October 13th, which is Sunday, and it runs from uh, noon to 6 uh, o'clock, and I believe uh, the location of it is the Har- uh, harbor side mm. which would be down near the harbor and it's going to feature over 70 artists and collectors of old and odd balloon twisting and special live magic shows and the uh, editors of uh, Weird New Jersey mm, uh, okay. will be there. And, and I have been asking them to come on to the show for many a moon and I figure I will uh, corner them uh, while I'm I'm there, and I'm sure they will be hustling their magazine, which is a really good uh, read. I mean, it's uh, uh, you know, of course, it's uh, uh, about strange things that go on in New Jersey, but uh, there are a lot of strange things that go on there. Having been born and, and raised there, of course, I know about uh, many of them, and I will be there handing out uh, cards uh, to uh, promote our show here. Uh, exploring the bazaar because we still need to have um, pe- more people know about the program and to tune in and perhaps even to come on as guests. So if you're in the uh, area and uh, I was hoping maybe Hercules uh, uh, will show up and Maria uh, DeAndrea will be there and a couple other surprise guests are helping me hand out some catalogs and all. So uh, perhaps we will see some of our uh, listeners there and uh, Carla, who was the, uh, a previous uh, co-host uh, will also be showing with some of the uh, gals that work at her uh, salon at balance. So uh, come on over and say hello. It doesn't cost a dime, although I'm sure you might find something magical, mystical, and curious to, to purchase and take home with you. But uh, Tim, let us get on with the evening's festivities because actually for me, it is sort of a, 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 a festivity. I've known the guests that we're going to be speaking with tonight for 
many a full moon. Uh, in fact, I met her uh, when I was uh, starting to uh, organize and run the New York School of Occult Arts and Sciences, which would have been in the early 1970s. So why don't you take it away there in Jasper and tell us about uh, our guest. All right. It, may, it will be my pleasure, Tim. Well, as you said, uh, Carol Linda Go uh, Gonzalez is a, uh, a good, uh, good friend of you of yours for uh, quite a long time. Now, um, Carol says that uh, she was born and raised in Manhattan and a frequent traveler on the astral. Now, since her early years, Carol uh, had paranormal experiences. Uh, you know, she says that parents will tell you, grow up, forget about that. But the experiences didn't stop and she didn't forget. Now, she grew older. She did the usual things with her life. She spent the first 20 years uh, uh, learning through school. Then she spent years working with the goal of saving her enough money to retire, made a pleasant life for herself in the usual way. Now, in the spiritual realm, Carol never uh, took her parents' advice, like a lot of us. Uh, <laughs> they were both uh, spiritual people and encouraged her to go to church and read the Bible. That was it. The plus side of that advice left her free to uh, come to her own interpretations based on her personal experiences. So now uh, she says that the church offered no final answers to the questions, but it did serve as a springboard to other experiences. Now, uh, she found... Much of what she was looking for at uh, is at uh, Weiser's Weiser's bookstore. Probably both of you know the uh, the, yeah, the yeah. Weiser's. Oh, Weiser's? Yeah, yeah. In, yeah. In, the, in the basement, no doubt. Ah, okay. Well, and that was back in the 1970s, and there were uh, spiritual books from all over the world. Even more important was their bulletin boards, and posted there were lectures and meetings with people who had plenty of interest and experiences in the topics that Carol wanted to learn about. Now, through the years, Carol ha was an active member of the Association for Research and Enlightenment in New York City, where she learned about Edgar Casey. She became a member of the uh, OTO Lodge and learned a bit uh, about what Alistair uh, Crawley did. And uh, she became a, uh, am I going to say this right, uh, uh, Carol, uh, 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 a Gardnerian Wiccan? <laughs> yeah, Gardner Gardnerian. Thank Gardnerian you, Gardnerian Wicca. Wiccan. And worked with the late uh, uh, um, uh, Margot Adler as well as others in that uh, movement. Now, she networked with many in the uh, New York City uh, pagan community in the 1990s. That led her to writing uh, an article for the Village Voice in 1999 about the uh, uh, pagan community in New York. Uh, still works with members of the Fellowship of ISIS, and Carol has met wonderful and not so wonderful people through her adventures in <laughs> spirituality. And she also is the, uh, let me find this on here. She also manages the New York city area, J.R.R. Tolkien and fantasy fans. So Carol, welcome to exploring the bazaar. Hello, God, you got everything perfect. Gee, what a, yeah. What a, what an introduction. How much did you pay him for that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll hey, never tell. Well, well, well you know, I, I know uh, Carol uh, since, uh, like you say, the 1970s. I was running uh, an organization down on 14th Street, um, Greenwich Village uh, area. It was the New York School of Occult Arts and Sciences. And we ran uh, ads in the local uh, media yeah. for work. We had workshops and seminars and seances on uh, Saturday night at uh, midnight. And one of the uh, individuals uh, that we had uh, lecturing uh, for us was a very attractive young lady by the name of Wally Elmark, mm -hmm. who was known as the White Witch of New York. Now, recently, um, Carol, our guest, uh, contributed a, 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 a little uh, memory, uh, I would say, mm -hmm. a, a chapter, a, a segment in the book. Uh, the book is uh, David Bowie, UFOs, Witchcraft, Cocaine and Paranoia, which is the occult saga mm -hmm. of Wally Elmark, the rock and roll witch of New York. And that book, of course, is available on Amazon. You can just probably type in uh, Wally and David Bowie, and the, the book will come mm -hmm. up. You'll find You know yeah. how to get all that stuff. But uh, how did you first find out about the occult center? Was that the first place that you had uh, gone to learn about the, uh, the occult? Mm -hmm. Was it through an ad in the Village Voice or some other no. media? 
No, there was a woman I knew named uh, Betty Rubel. And Betty knew you and talked about you, your interest in UFOs. Uh, I was in a Search for God group, which is an Edgar Casey group, and she would talk about you. Now, I think I came across something at Wise's, because that was the place yep. to, mm-hmm. to network and to find where to go. And I was very interested. Now, at the, t- w- the first time I went, I really was interested in the spiritual aspect. So Wally was really a presence, and I never forgot her. I didn't know all that much about her, except that I, I thought she was marvelous and uh, amazing, and I never forgot. And every time I, I would speak to you, I'd ask after her. But yes. um, I also later on had a UFO sighting. So oh, that did. was I, I didn't know yes. about that, Carol. What, what, yes. what was that all about? When, when was that, was that in, in the... 1972 in Brooklyn? Mm-hmm. And there was at the time a, a flap. A lot of people who saw it later on, I did meet people who saw the same thing in the same area. And uh, there was a, an, uh, an article in the Village Voice about this flap that was going on, and it asked for people to report it. So I reported it, but I never forgot it. It was very strange. It was, um, I walked out in the middle of the street at night just because it was warm, just to get some air, and it, the, the atmosphere changed. All the lights went out, and this thing fell out of the sky. I could even see a pattern on it, and it moved. It did a 90-degree turn and moved away, and it was so fast, I thought I imagined it. But years later, I did meet people who saw the same thing in the same area. That was my interest in in flying saucers and UFOs. Uh And I remember I would walk along 47th Street, I think it was, and there was a, I thought it was called Flying Saucer News. Yes, yes, bookstore. No, no, it was the Flying Saucer News uh, Bookstore and Prosperity Clinic. Uh, It was a, a, a little bookstore there that had moved from Spanish Harlem, like 96th Street, uh, and mm-hmm. it had moved over to the, uh, the west uh, side. Mm-hmm. I guess that's kind of on the fringes of uh, Hell's uh, uh, Kitchen. And yeah. the show business. Uh, the show right, business. right. Yeah. And, and a little man, a little fellow that ran, the Jim Rigberg, kept very strange hours because I think for a while he did have a, uh, uh, another uh, uh, job. It was, I wouldn't mm-hmm. say there was a, uh, you know, a part-time effort because he did put out a little... Uh, a newsletter as well, but uh, he had a, a, a small collection of books and sold incense and talismans. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I guess a lot of people knew about uh, the uh, his his place. Of course, he's been deceased for um, uh, quite a number uh, of years. But he was a he was an early character in the uh, UFO uh, uh, scene yeah. in, uh, in in New York by by all means. You know, uh, yeah, I would pass now, by there every week and I would see it, and I yeah. I. I uh, I know that you did a, a UFO conference at the Hotel Commodore. Well, that one, yeah, Jim Mosley uh, actually organized uh, that one. Now, uh, Jim was like the head honcho in Manhattan as mm-hmm. far as the UFO scene went. And I had first met Jim, I guess, around 1965 or so. I, I was just a, a, a budding a, a teenager. A and, boy. And I would, a, a, yeah, a boy, yeah. I was certainly, I have grown up now. I'm uh, not a boy anymore, unfortunately. Uh, but I would take the bus over from my home in New Jersey and go to one of the hotels where he had his meeting along Times Square. In those days, you could rent a, a, a little room with maybe 50 or 60 folding chairs in it for, for you know, $25 for the night. You can imagine what they charge uh, now. But mm-hmm. he would have some of the top-notch uh, speakers on the subject. Uh, some of his uh, speakers would appear on the Long John Neville talk show, uh, the mm-hmm. party line, the night before. And, and he would sometimes get a crowd, maybe a couple of hundred people, Gray Barker, Ivan T. Uh, Sanderson. And uh, I, somehow I, I worked my way uh, through the front door and became uh, a Jim's assistant. I helped him uh, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. set up the, uh, the chairs and uh, uh, type out the, uh, the, the flyers. And uh, he, he had an interesting organization. And... Uh, then in 1967, he uh, had the largest indoor UFO conference or convention at the um, uh, Hotel Commodore, which is now uh, Trump, one of the mm-hmm. Trump buildings, uh, I, I think. And uh, 
uh, had a by Venus, the lady from another planet, and uh, the uh, Roy Finnis, who was the uh, the star of the TV show The Invaders, and uh, mm-hmm. Howard Menger spoke, and that's the first time that I even met uh, Brad uh, Steiger, and and then after he kind of gave up and moved to uh, to Florida, I, I took over having having uh, meetings. We would mm-hmm. rent uh, uh, places around Times uh, Square, like the Wilkie. Memorial Building, and you know we had little uh, venues, and then uh, we opened the occult uh, center down on Fourteenth Street. It was a, lo- a twenty-two hundred foot mm-hmm. square loft with about fifty chairs mm-hmm. in front, and uh, uh, some room in the back. We'd have a uh, Saturday night seance with uh, Kitty Steele, and while he was one of the lecturers, can mm-hmm. can you uh, remember some of the other people that spoke that you uh, you? I I remember going to Wally's apartment. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's where I, I went uh, to some of the events. I remember um, that she had a magic circle at the door. Yes. I, a mirror. I, I think a magic mirror yes. on the wall. Yes. Yes. She was, I just thought she was amazing. I mean, what was I, 18? And that was this beautiful, alluring, mystical person. Uh, so I was interested in that. I, I didn't really get interested in the more uh, intellectual aspects of ceremonial magic and some of the other things that I later on uh, came to read about and learn a bit about. Uh, well, but in those also, days, was it was about into, magic. Yeah, she was also, yeah, she was at the candle magic, and uh, yep. she did uh, attend uh, some of the uh, seances that uh, uh, Clifford uh, Bias uh, gave over at the... Uh, I remember Insonia. Clifford Bias. Uh, yeah, the Insonia was the uh, uh, the headquarters for the spiritualist uh, movement mm-hmm. uh, in those days, I think. Every uh, Sunday uh, afternoon, they had uh, a spiritualist uh, yes. uh, services. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, I went fact, to one of those. Yeah, in fact, Carol Rodriguez, the gal who works for me, the, uh, uh, for me to this day, my assistant mm-hmm. here, she went to a séance that uh, Clifford uh, uh, Bias uh, gave. She speaks of him uh, uh, very highly. In fact, she mentions the incident in the uh, uh, the book about Wally, where she actually heard her dog uh, come through. She recognized mm-hmm. this. Park and, and so forth. So okay, so you you took uh, classes at the occult center and attended uh, Wally's uh, uh, mm-hmm. lecture. How? Uh, what did you? Uh, where did you proceed after that? In what direction? After that, you... it was Wiser's, Wiser's, and all the fabulous stuff on the bulletin board. Mm-hmm. You would go into the aisles at Wiser's, and you could hear people talking about. Uh, remember. I heard them talking about this man who was visiting in, in from wherever it was. He was in Long Island. His name yes. was Israel Regardi, and he had known Crowley. So you hear all these interesting conversations in the aisles. I remember the first book I saw, they had an aisle for witchcraft, and I was interested uh-huh. in that at the time, Gerald Gardner's stuff. The first book I saw was this little pamphlet, and it said, Curses in Verses was by a man called Leo Martello. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Oh, he was, I, I, knew, I, I knew Leo. He was a, yeah. a, a good friend of Witch Hazel, which oh. I know sounds like a, a put-on. I but know, she, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, she was a, a real person. In fact, she once showed me her driver's license. She had oh. her name illegally Witch changed. Hazel. <laughs> Hazel, yeah. Now, uh, Wally was the white witch of uh, New York. She would uh, had a very positive attitude towards yeah. this would never put a curse on uh, uh, anybody, which Hazel, on the other uh, other hand, had a little bit more of a dark side uh, mm-hmm. uh, to her. Uh, she would uh, cast, if she didn't like you, she'd uh, either kick you in the shins or cast uh-huh. a spell on you. Uh, I, I do uh, I, I do uh, believe, but we... We, we had almost an like that. There. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, yeah, oh, he was. Yes, he certainly was. He was the, the first gay witch that I know of, and he was very... Uh, outspoken uh, yeah, about yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, by all the means. Uh, in fact, mm-hmm. he wrote a paperback book, which I don't remember the title of, and it's probably difficult to uh, to uh, to find. But uh, okay, so you did you actually become a witch? I mean, would you consider yourself yes. a pagan? Well, well, this I was for many years. I became. Um, see, there are different strains of occultism yes. in New York City at that time. You had like mm-hmm. the OTO people that were in the clubs. Yeah, there was a place they called Nels. I think they would hang out at. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I yeah. Didn't, yeah, I didn't. I've been to Nels, but not yeah. to see. Them. Peter Lavendo, Lavenda, 
was part of that. Uh, Gurney uh, and Jim Wasserman, who wrote a great book um, that talks about the the early formation of of the Tahuti Lodge in New York City. That was one strain. But then you had, like through Gardnerian Wicca, coming out of Long Island with Raymond Buckland's people. Buckland, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you had another strain that came through Margot Adler. And within that little mess, or mishmash, I don't know how to explain it, there was Herman Slater at the Warlock shop later, oh, the Magical my Child. Oh, Herman, what a, what a, what a character, by, yeah. by, by, by all means. He used to carry all our books there, and uh, he had, his office was behind the sliding uh, 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 bookshelves. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes, and, he, and was, he sold he sold everything. I mean, uh, uh, capes to perform, uh, you know, satanic rituals in uh, crystal balls, uh, uh, tarot cards, uh, uh, oils, and enough herbs that when you uh, mm-hmm. came into the yes. shop, you didn't know exactly what you were smelling. Yes, yes, and in the back, he had the OTO would meet. He had people who supposedly the ne- Necronomicon was written back there yeah. in one of their rituals. So you had that strain. But I, I was more interested in this wholesome Gerald Gardner from the, Brit- the British, the British yeah. strain of Wicca. And that came through uh, Margot Adler. Now, M- Margot Adler was the big witch in the 70s and 80s. And after that came a woman called Judy Harrow who wrote some good books. And after that, we had something called New Moon New York in the the 1990s, which was a network group of different pagan groups in the area. So I was involved with all that. Um, I was looking, the first time I actually had an opportunity to go to a circle was through something called Our Pagan Times, which was a little newsletter. It was a great newsletter, and I got involved with that. Um, And then... I moved on. I'm still involved through the Fellowship of Isis, which is a very different kind of group, more eclectic and founded by Olivia Robertson, Lady Olivia Robertson, in Ireland in a castle. Very lovely person, lovely people. I can't say anything negative about anyone I've met through that. Um, and we, we get together, we go and, and talk about general spiritual matters. So I kind of evolved into different things. The OTO was important, I think, because Aleister Crowley is a name that you hear. You hear all kinds of things about him. But what do you really know that he teaches? You know, so you want to go and you want to read about his teachings, his ideas. He wasn't all re- satanic. He was a magician, but it wasn't uh, what people think of horns and the devils or Church of Satan. Yeah. It, it was a very intellectual path, actually with some very beautiful writing that he did. But he also liked, he also liked the attention that he, uh, uh, oh. that he, uh, got. yeah, by, by all means, he was the, the, uh, in a sense, the PT Barnum of the, uh, the yes. adult in his, in his yes. day, by all means. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, I, yeah. I, I believe, uh, do I hear the, uh, the, the yes, sounds you do. of the commercial, uh, uh break, uh, uh, coming upon us. So, uh, We'll be out of here for just a, a minute or two, and then we'll be back with our very fascinating guest. I, I've, this was like homecoming at night uh, uh, for me. I, I haven't talked really to anyone about the Occult Center in all the early days of the Occult in New York in a, in a long time. Now back to exploring the bizarre with two of the most electrifying researchers in the paranormal, your hosts, Timothy Timothy Beckley Beckley and Tim Swartz. Welcome back to Exploring the Bazaar. I'm Tim Swartz. Tonight, we're talking with Carol Linda Gonzalez. And uh, Carol, uh, you had mentioned uh, during the first segment that you uh, wrote an article for uh, The Village Voice in uh, 1999. What was that uh, article about? Well, it was about the different groups that were active in New York City at the time, where pagans gather. We had candle therapy, otherworldly waxes, Morgana's Chamber, Robert Pratt had a group, of course, Enchantments, which is still there uh, under different management. Uh, the ra- even the Radical Fairies were mentioned. 
New Moon, New York. There are different groups that were meeting around New York City. That's what it was about. Mm-hmm. And at the time, there was nothing like that. I was told by the Village Voice editor, they did an, um, a feature on alternative religions. So this was the pagans. There was a section for Santeria. There was a section for something else, too. Um, so that's what it was about. Mm-hmm. So now, how how has times changed since then? When uh, you know you you had all of these these groups really active, and uh, you were talking about the uh, the bookstore bulletin board, and uh, so you know here we are now in the uh, the twenty first century. I mean, is this uh, are are these groups still active? Are they still meeting, or has uh, times really changed that much for everyone? Well, some of them are, but the majority are not. They're, it's very different now. Some of the groups, there's, they have a, a witch fest. A, these groups are there to make money. And mm. one of the differences at the time when I, was do, when I was involved was we weren't there to make money. We were there to share experiences, try to answer questions or mysteries that we came across. As I had mentioned, I was a good churchgoer. And I had had all these experiences, but when I asked, they didn't really have answers uh, that made sense to me. Uh, so I went off on my own to learn on my own. And that was really what, the, what these groups were about. The thing about Wicca at the time was that the ritual was very beautiful. It's a very lovely ritual. It's lovely to share. Uh, people got bored with it because it's the same thing after a while, but the, when you do it like that repetitively, it has a power of its own that creates an energy of fellowship. And, and, and it, would, it was just lovely. But then you add other dr- groups that are a little more dark, as uh, Tim mentioned in the first segment. Um, so you dealt with them. There were different paths. That's what the groups were about. Mm-hmm. The ones I mentioned were all pretty much positive groups. You talked about uh, your own personal experiences uh, when when you were younger. Do you uh, would you care to uh, share some of those with us? Sure, I'll give you one. The very first one I remember, I was a little girl. Mm-hmm. I was asleep, and I woke up in the middle of the night, and I see a man standing at the door, and I get up and I said, "Daddy." I remember him very clearly. He had a smile, and he had this shock of white hair that was loose. And I ran to the door, said, Daddy? And when I got there, there was nobody there. Hmm. But I had seen him, like three-dimensional, as clear as day. And I've had experiences like that throughout my life, growing up, dreams that come true. So you want answers. In Bible class, they talked about Joseph's dreams and his interpretations. I wanted answers like that. They didn't have answers like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, it, se- it seems like that uh, with uh, the, the the church, especially, uh, you know, like, well, yeah, Joseph Joseph could have these dreams, but you know, if you had them, then you know, it's probably the devil or yes, <laughs> yes, you get that or kind something of thing. like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I think that a lot of people who who may be listening to this, their you know their concept of of say like you know Wiccan or or, or witchcraft or, you know that sort of thing uh, could either go with like maybe the uh, uh, the books they read as a teenager, you know how to be a teenage witch, to yeah. you know bubble bubble toil and trouble and riding mm-hmm. around on, on on a broomstick. So uh, you know what. Uh, if you had, you know, and you do, you, you know, you have this opportunity, what's, you know, what's the difference? I mean, what, uh, you know, what's the reality? Well, in terms of what I think, Mm -hmm. there are groups like our double, double toil and trouble. There are groups like that. Mm -hmm. And if you are open to, if you're psychic, you have any kind of spiritual sensitivity, you're going to, you could be attracted to something very negative with negative people. I met a few along the, uh, along the way, people who use you, and uh, you can tell. I, I won't go into details, but you can tell when you're in a group of people that are somewhat negative, and you want to pull away from them. They, they drain you, and they, 
there things happen to you that are very negative bad and you want to get away from them and then you have wonderful people on the west side when uh tim was talking about uh clifford bias there were all these wonderful groups along in on manhattan's west side there was the at the uh cathedral of saint john the divine there was there were people that would meet on a weekly basis um there was a woman called Marlene that I knew on the West Side, and she was said to have met, um, uh, what was John Lennon's wife? Okoyono. Yeah. They lived, they, they lived on the same street. Um, she had some abilities, and uh, Ethel Myers, who Hans Holzer worked with, was on 73rd oh, yes. Street. She, she they was, were all on 73rd. She was just on TV uh, uh, last week. There's yeah. a program on the Travel Channel yeah. uh, with uh, with uh, Dave Schrader uh, from right. uh, uh, Darkness uh, Radio. Right. He's a uh, friend of ours. And uh, they had some of Hans's old uh, home yeah. uh, movies. Uh, and, well, and he, of course, she, he worked with uh, Sean Robbins as well, who used to lecture uh, uh, for us all the time. I met her. But I, I had readings from Ethel Myers. They were all on 73rd Street between Broadway, you know, where the Ansonia is, all along that street. Yeah, there and were, then uh, also upstairs, upstairs, too, there was uh, two ladies, uh, 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 Herzog, I think her name was, and they used to uh, they used to have uh, lectures. Uh, uh, they had, uh, um, uh, what was the fellow um, from uh, California that wrote the uh, book on, um, oh, the uh, uh, Masons, the heavyset uh, guy uh, uh, who, uh, he was... Uh, a, a Manning, I can't. Jesus, it slips my uh, my mind. Is Bolton Mason? Um, no, I can't. Rem- oh. I can't remember his uh, yeah. name. But a very, very well uh, elect- known lecture on the uh, Mas- uh, Masonic uh, order. He had oh. a book. It was like a thousand pages uh, that uh, was um, uh, abound with the gold leaf and and everything. Tremendous. Not tremendous Manly book. Palmer. Not Manly yeah, Palmer Manly Hall. Palmer Hall. Oh, That's I correct. thought he was. Okay. I didn't know uh, he, he was that uh, alive that uh, late. Oh, my goodness, yes. I, no, I don't remember. Where, it, it, it must have been in the early uh, uh, 70s because they had yeah. um, a, a place upstairs, uh, the, the two ladies. They had a huge gong uh, in the, uh, you know, by the, uh, the podium. And when they started the, the talks, they would, re- you know, bang the gong, which would uh, were really, really loud. <laughs> and, they had another fellow there from, I think, from England or New Zealand, who always gave his wife a hard time because she could never get the projector to uh, to run uh, uh, oh. properly. Uh, but it, it was a it was a really active time in in Manhattan. Yeah. Then there was Vicky. Hay- I don't know if you knew Vicky Hayes. She had no. this little theater uh, up above the uh, car dealership there on, on Broadway and maybe fifty fourth mm. or fifty fifth Street. And at midnight on uh, Saturdays, she would have people like Ted Owens and uh, Woody Derenberger and all, and they mm-hmm. would uh, come in and, and, and lecture in her a dance studio. Ah. I remember at the Universalist Church, there was, Linda Eastman came one year, and there were thousands of people, thousands, waiting to get in to hear her. Mm-hmm. And uh, what was the priest who, who went off and his son died well, in the pipe. desert? Oh, yeah, he goodness, was there. Bishop Pike, yes. It was incredible. The people, the activities. That's how I got uh, involved with the ARE. Again, another group of wonderful people. Um, it's different from the dark paths that I, I kind yeah. of touched on. Uh, uh, that's that's a whole different world. And you don't really, if, if you're looking for the light, you're not going to stay there. <laughs> that's all I'll say about that. Why don't Why don't you tell tell our listeners a little bit about uh, your involvement with Edgar Casey? I, I I would guess that uh, so, uh, uh, most people would know who he was, but give us a little uh, a thumbnail. Oh well, I was involved um, when I was uh, around the same time that I I met you. They they had uh, the Association for Research and Enlightenment had a group on East East thir- West Thirty Fifth Street, and they would have these gatherings every morning saturday mornings there were dream interpretation groups so you'd come and people would talk about the dreams they had they'd talk about casey's readings uh people would come and lecture from virginia beach um we had it was just amazing one time ingo swan came 
to one of the lectures. Um, just again, it, it was just a wonderful time with a lot of people seeking spiritual enlightenment. Uh, true that those very uh, conservative people in the church would probably think it was all work of the devil. But if you can't answer the questions, people who are uh, people who are really seeking are going to find them for themselves. They're going to have their own faith, and they're going to follow what I would call the road of of uh, resonance. They're going to follow a road that gathers, that, that guides them from, from life uh, challenge to the next. That's how I was able to, to survive in the world and make a nice living for myself so I don't have to worry about money or anything. I live well. Uh, and I learned how to use my skills in the workplace. But I did a little magic. If some workmate annoyed me, I would do a little magic and I would play psychology with them. Because if, you're, if your job is on the line, that's your livelihood. You have a right to defend yourself. So I would use the things I learned to protect myself from some of the people who tried to get you fired or, or try to set you up because people do things like that. Now that's uh, that's a very interesting uh, aspect. I think that uh, there'd be a lot of people that uh, would want to learn <laughs> that uh, those kinds of abilities. Just uh, I mean, you know, not not to, well, you know, cur- not you, to, not to curse everyone in your work, but just no, uh, it's not you know, help yourself along. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what you did when you went to a search for God group, or if you went to a a, a spiritual group or a Wicca group, you would be working towards enlightenment, learning how to handle problems. Uh, it, it isn't uh, uh, doing a spell and the person drops dead or something like that. What you're learning is how to work with other people, how to understand the nature of reality. And that's when I got into more intellectual things, where you start reading about uh, different philosophers. Uh, there were people I met who who knew, well, who knew Casey. There were people who met uh, Krishnamurti. Um, it was, it, as long as you're open to different paths and, and, and reading and, and willing to, to learn and not think you're going to go pay somebody to do a spell, you, you're going to bring that within your, your own soul. You're going to bring that within yourself. And it empowers you and makes you a much more powerful person. Some of the dark paths that I have come across, they want you to give them money and then they do a spell for you. And it may work. And then they keep trying to get more money out of you to keep the spells working. That's one thing that I've seen. Um, you don't want to go that way. At least I, I never did. So. Hey, you, you mentioned, of course, uh, 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 earlier uh, in the uh, show here uh, about your UFO sighting. Uh, aren't oh. you a fr- yeah, friends of uh, uh, Mark uh, Brinkerhoff and his wife Phyllis, right? Yes, I have met them. Yes, and, and we did uh, a, he, yeah, we did a talk together. I did an intro about Ingo Swan, who he was, um, how um, a little bit about what I knew, but they actually knew him, mm-hmm. and so then it segued into their experiences with Ingo Swan as an artist, his work as an artist, right. Right. Well, That's what look, we yeah, talked about. Mark, yeah, Mark is a, an incredible uh, uh, painter. He, uh, uh, artist. He he takes his uh, UFO contacts uh, mm-hmm. uh, with mm-hmm. Space uh, Brothers and does the uh, you know paintings. Uh, uh, very very. I mean, just tremendous. Uh, uh, one of uh, the uh, Ashtar is in this uh, book that we did. Uh, the Space Brothers uh, speak that, that came out a couple of uh, months mm-hmm. ago, and. Uh, we we knew Ingo's now Ingo Swan. I had met him. I I could say technically that I had lunch with him, but I never really s- spoke to him at uh, length. He would mm-hmm. come to uh, John Keel's Fortean Society meetings, which mm-hmm. were held in the vacant uh, what is now a vacant lot right next to where I reside. And as of today, they have started putting up a skyscraper there. So oh. I have to con- with buzzing and drilling and hammering for the next five years of my life. Oh not, dear. Not a, yeah, I mean, well, you know, Carol, this whole neighborhood now is nothing but skyscrapers. They all look the same. Mm-hmm. You could accidentally walk into a building and not know where you were because it looks mm-hmm. like the same one that you passed, uh, you know, a block away. But uh, 
uh, Ingo would come to the uh, the uh, John Keel's uh, meetings, and then we would uh, go down to Miss K's, the uh, the little deli on the corner, sit upstairs and eat meatball sandwiches. Mm-hmm. That was the. But yet, uh, uh, Ingo, uh, did you ever uh, work with him in the remote viewing at all? No, no. I in fact, the fr- I only saw him that one time at the ARE, where he came and everybody was was he attended one of the talks. And everyone was all excited about him. Uh, I don't think that people really understood what remote viewing was at the time. It was sort of something new. You had talked about um, the uh, uh, some groups that uh, that take the dark path, so to speak. Now, and uh, you. In in reference to UFOs, I don't, I'm not sure. Have uh, have you heard the stories that have come out, uh, probably over the last ten years or so, saying that the the UFO phenomena is a result of uh, groups uh, 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 bringing them into this reality using the dark path? Well, I ha- I can imagine what they would say that uh, they would be, this sounds like something from Lovecraft, you know, uh, that they would be uh, invoking dark entities, but I don't think I've heard of it as UFO contacts, more as demonic uh, things that were coming into the world. Like uh, that, that um, I just went to a UFO conference in Phoenix last month, mm-hmm. and they were mentioning the, the Skinwalker Ranch, Oh, yeah. And how some people that that some of the the uh, government agencies that were working there were trying to cut it uh, shut it down because they felt it was demonic in nature. Mm-hmm. I I wouldn't know. I'm more interested. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Right now, I'm more interested in hearing about people who have had contacts who are mm-hmm. unquestionably honest rather than people who make up stories. Mm -hmm. So I I just heard Calvin Parker, who I thought was a phenomenal guest. Uh, Mm -hmm. He's so honest and sincere. Someone who who, um, had, uh, he actually had a a mental breakdown or emotional breakdown because he couldn't handle what he had seen. He was only a 17-year-old man at the time. Uh, People like that is who I'm interested in. How do they handle it? What, what, when they tell me what they've seen, I believe them. And I want to know what they've seen. Because there's all these theories now that UFOs and entities that come from them, they're really from our future or they're from some psychological place. Yes. I, I, don't, I, can't, I can't deal with that. Because if people are actually seeing them and having physical interactions with them, they're not psychological and they're not from some other place. I want to hear more about that. That's what my interest in is at this point. I know I saw, saw, had this sighting. I know it's real. I know people who've had it, and that's what I'm interested in. These other things are, I love conspiracy theories. Believe me, I love them. But some of them are go way off track, and I can't follow all of them. I'm just interested in a, a few. I'll stick to the few I can handle. Let's say that. <laughs> hey, uh, Carol. Now we we started off the the show with our little skit uh, about the the Hobbit, which I oh. have to admit I know I know little uh, if nothing uh, about. How how did you become interested in the uh, in the um, uh, in the literature, and uh, how does it tie in if it does with uh, uh, the realm of the paranormal here? It ties in with the pagan world. The um, the, uh, Judy Harrow be- and Margot Adler became aware of Wicca, of Gerald Gardner, of, of magic in that way through science fiction conferences. The word it was a wor- word of mouth. It was passed through by word of mouth about Wicca, what this was. People got interested in it, and one of my friends, who no longer is with us, was uh, you could say a Tolkien scholar. So he was very involved in the world of Tolkien, and he connected it with folklore, because magic is about folklore. There's magic in folklore. So he, connect, he was a Celtic scholar as well. He taught at the Irish Art Center. He spoke fluent Gaelic, all three 
versions of it, plus French and Russian and many other languages. And he was also very knowledgeable about Tolkien. So I became very interested in Tolkien. It's actually a, uh, a literary uh, field because Tolkien was held the chair of Old English at Oxford. So there's many groups that are devoted to his work in terms of literature. But I got involved with it because of the, the pagan aspect or the magical aspect. It's a magical world. All right. Well, we're coming up on the three-minute mark before the uh, end of our show. So uh, uh, is uh, uh, we usually would say, you know, if, uh, if you have an uh, online uh, presence, you can let our audience know uh, more about that. Uh, you know, have you uh, considered doing any more uh, uh, writing or, either, you know, putting your experiences together in a book? Oh, you're speaking to me? Oh, oh yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm still working in the legal field. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm going to have to wait until I retire before I do anything like that. I've actually started a website, but I keep stopping it because I can't think of what to write about it. Um, I am interested in, uh, more interested in the face-to-face aspect of working with different people, making magic together because it's healthy. It, it brings health to you. But one day I may write something about some of my experiences or my thoughts or ideas but at this point i'm not sure i I think i'm going to finish my legal work and uh which is very boring and it's about aerospace and all sorts of (laughs) boring stuff but um licenses what, what have you but i i have been putting together a journal every magical worker has a journal they have a journal of what they experience, they, the things they do, and the milestones in their life. So I've been putting that together. Maybe one day I'll, 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 I'll put it out as a blog. We'll see. And, and of course, people, yeah, people can, can find you on uh, Facebook, especially people in the New York area who might, oh, yeah. want, to know where to, wh- might want to know where to go to get some uh, enlightenment. I mean, you have uh, all sure. the knowledge as far as that goes. And again, the book uh, is David Bowie, UFOs, Witchcraft, Cocaine, and Paranoia, the Occult Saga of uh, Wally uh, L. Mark. And it has uh, uh, some material in there by Carol and other uh, to do with Wally and uh, uh, covers a lot of the things we talked about tonight. And don't forget our YouTube channel, Mr. UFOs, a secret file. And Carol, nice to speak with you and nice to have known you all these many years great i want to know you another many years and i welcome anybody to friend me on facebook who's listening to this and just wants to have somebody to talk to on spiritual topics and things of that nature and and and, uh, tim out there in jasper indiana we will uh, speak to you um, uh, next week if not sooner and uh, keep up the work there on that uh, forthcoming uh, book incredible encounters Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Carol. You've been listening to Exploring the Bazaar with hosts Timothy Beckley and Tim Swartz. They're taking back the night by jetting non-stop across the cosmos in search of the truly bizarre and totally unexplained with you as their co pilot Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. For more information on exploring the bazaar and hosts Timothy Beckley and Tim Swartz, check out their KCOR Digital Radio Network. Follow their YouTube channel at MRUFO1100. Exploring the bazaar.